Hello! In today's lesson, we'll be going through living and non-living things. So for living things and non-living things, how do we tell the difference? So the way we can tell the difference or separate between our living things and non-living things will be using classification. So what is classification? So classification is about putting objects into different categories in an orderly and systematic manner. Okay, this will help us to identify and locate our objects easily. So why do we want to do that? This will allow us to find and locate the items that we group or separated based on their properties. Okay, so some ways we group will be normally true. So we put objects into different categories, right? So how do we separate them? We normally split them by their properties. So this is normally for materials or characteristics okay so characteristics will be mainly for living things so these are why this is why we do our classification and this is why classification is very important so first for things we have living and non-living things so how do we classify or group between living things and non-living things. How do we tell the difference or split them up? Okay, so first we'll be going through the different properties or characteristics of living things. So this is very important to take note of them. So firstly, living things can grow. Okay, so if you see on the right hand side, living things include plants because plants can grow. So if you see, it starts from a seed to a seedling and so it grow bigger and bigger and bigger into a plant. So this is growing. Or if you see a baby, so a baby will grow bigger and bigger and bigger, then finally become an adult. And even though they are adult, they will continue to grow. They grow older and older, become an elderly. Okay. So living things grow. Okay. So plants animals, humans, we are all living things because, because we can grow. So moving on to the next property of living things. Living things can move. Okay. So if you look at the rabbits over here, they can move around. We human beings are living things too because we can move around as well. So things that can move are living things. But don't confuse yourself. Okay. So if we carry something and bring it along with us. So for example, if we bring a pencil case with us, we grab it and move it to another place. The pencil case moved, but it didn't move by itself. Okay. So here, when we say living things are things which can move, it refers to moving by themselves. Okay. If it is through the help of other things like us, we use our hands to grab the object and move it around. It is not considered a living thing because the object that we carry or grab didn't move by themselves. Okay, so living things are things which can move and most importantly by themselves. So thirdly, living things are things which can breathe. Okay, so you see the horse over here, it is breathing. So you can see the air coming out of the nose of the horse. So we human beings, we breathe. When we breathe, we take in oxygen okay so we inhale we take in oxygen we also exhale so when we exhale we give out what do we give out we give out carbon dioxide okay so this is the process of breathing or what we call respiration okay we respire we take in oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide so this horse when it's breathing the air out, the air is consisting of our carbon dioxide. Of course, the air that the horse breathes out consists of other gases such as your nitrogen gas, all those, okay, and your oxygen gas. But when we take in, there's a higher percentage of oxygen and lower percentage of carbon dioxide as compared to the gas we breathe out, okay. So, fourth. Living things are things which can reproduce. Okay, reproduce 
you see the dogs over here? The dogs will give birth to puppies. So they are reproducing. So reproduce can be in the form of giving birth to young. So giving birth to youngs or laying eggs. Okay, so this is for living things like animals. Okay, for plants, they give birth through seeds, correct? So they produce seeds and these seeds will grow into new plants. So this is for plants, okay? Or for fungi, we have your spores, okay? And for bacteria, it will be cell division, okay? So there are different, different ways of reproduction but all living things will reproduce. And lastly, for the fifth characteristic, living things are things which can respond to external changes. So if you look at the mimosa plant on the right hand side, when we touch it, the mimosa plant responds by closing its leaf. So this is the mimosa plant responding to changes. So in the wild, when we have those zebras, okay, when they are moving around, then they suddenly saw a predator such as a lion. The lion starts to chase after the zebra. The zebra will start to run for its life. So this is when it is responding to external changes. Okay, so responding to threat in this case. Okay, responding to danger. So when we see danger or when we feel scared in our lives, we also run away. So that's how we respond to external changes. So living things will be able to respond to changes. So for non-living things, okay, so if there is a piece of paper and suddenly there's a fire that started, the paper wouldn't run for its life even though it will be burnt if it doesn't move away, right? But it is a non-living thing so it wouldn't run away, run away from the fire. But if we are present and we see a fire, we would run away. So this is how we respond to changes. So living things would respond to changes but non-living things would not respond to changes, okay? So with that, we've come to the end of living things and non-living things. So today, we mainly went through the different characteristics of living things. The five main important characteristics of our living things, okay?